Welcome to Interoperability Protocols. Touch Designer is great for connecting to different programs, devices, and tools. Let's look at a couple of examples for sharing data with Touch Designer, specifically OSC and DMX. Open Sound Control, or OSC, is used to send data between different processes or different applications on the same network. Let's get started by creating some fake data that we are going to send via OSC. I'm going to double click on my network and navigate to the LFO chop. Now that we have our LFO chop, I'm going to right click on my LFO and I'm going to select my OSC out chop. An important thing to note is that, you know, OSC normally sends channels to some other process in the network or another application. But here, let's pretend that we're trying to route this OSC data back into a touch designer process. And in this case, just right here in the network. I'm going to double click then on my network and add an OSC in chop. We can see right away that our OSC in is pulling data from our OSC out. And a way to check that is if we look at our network port, our network port is set to 10,000 by default. And then if we go to our OSC out, it is also set to 10,000. However, if I change this even to 10,001, We'll notice a pause, and then we'll notice that our OSC in is no longer receiving that data. So it's really key and important here that we make sure that our OSCs, uh, our OSC out and our OSC in matches the, the correct network port that we're sending data on. Additionally, if you would prefer to deal with OSC messages in Python, you can also use an OSC out and in dat instead of a chop. So I'll just, oh, double click on the network and then right here to my dats. And if I type in OSC, we can see that we also have an OSC in and an OSC out that we can use with dats and script with Python. Now let's move over here and look at DMX. DMX is a common industry protocol for lighting systems. So what we can do here is let's double click on our network, navigate to the chop tab and add a constant chop. This constant chop is going to be used right now to create channels for our imaginary lighting setup. So here on the name zero parameter, we're going to change the name of this channel to dimmer. And then we're going to add another channel. We're going to call it R, another channel G, and then our last channel B. So this is just an example setup. Perfect. An important thing to know with our chops here is that if I adjust some of these values, we'll see that they actually only go up to one. And if you've worked with DMX before, uh, you'll know that the range needed for fixtures is zero to 255. And so what we can do is we're going to right click on our constant. We're going to add a math chop. Now that we have our math chop, we're going to go to the range page. Our from range, zero to one, we're going to keep that, but we're going to change our two range from zero to 255. Perfect. Now we can see that these values, if we go back to our constant and we adjust them, they're in a zero to 255 range. Perfect. The one other important thing to do here though is right now we have decimal points and it's important when we're sending our data that we switch that back on the op page on the integer parameter, we set that to round. That will make sure that all of our, our integers are rounding up to make sure we're tr transmitting the exact integer value that we want. Great. Now, finally, I'm going to right click on my math chop and I'm going to add a DMX out chop. Perfect. We see that here, but we have a little warning. If I middle mouse click, we see that I could not connect with my device. If I check my DMX out, there is an interface parameter. This interface parameter, if we click on it, relates to all of the different ways that we can send out our DMX channels. And here by default, it's looking for my NTEC USB Pro. I don't have that connected, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and select ArtNet. ArtNet is essentially DMX over Ethernet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to middle mouse, make sure we have all of our channels here. We have four channels. Great. 
And we are going to simulate this again in a similar fashion. Ideally, we would be sending this to a lighting desk, but what we're going to do is I'm going to double click on the network and I'm going to add a DMX in. Perfect. I drop that in. It's flickering. It's grumpy. And that's because it's looking for the end tech. Instead, I'm going to select ArtNet. And we can see if we zoom on in here, we see the channels that I had made the first four channels. So it's C1, C2, C3, C4. The last one should be 209. If I check my channels, it is indeed 209. So here, even though it's a bit hard to see, if I scroll all the way down at the bottom of this DMX in shop, we can see that we have a total of 512 channels. And that is because it is one DMX universe. That is just a quick way to look at how we can both bring in data via OSC or via DMX. So Touch Designer also supports MIDI devices. You'll notice that there is a MIDI, MIDI chops and MIDI dats, as well as in the dialogues, you'll notice a MIDI device mapper. Uh, it supports MIDI as well as TCP IP internet protocol for any web servers or web clients, and generally Touch Designer is a great tool for flexibly connecting to other processes and other applications.